Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Now, one thing, and I tweeted out about this last night, one thing that people do, spent with younger kids, you don't hear people talk about very often that is actually very true, is that Thanksgiving and Christmas, when, when the kids are out of school, it creates one big problem. The, my kids, they fight more. And the reason they fight more is because they're sitting around. They're not, they're not in their structured um, situation for however many weeks that usually is. And they get to fighting. And so last night, <laughs> and this is funny, last night after uh, my older son had been picking on the younger one for uh, part of the day, the younger one was getting, my seven-year-old was getting tired and he's, he's on the phone and I looked at, he was on Google. I looked at him and, and I said, what, what are you Googling? And he said, how to get rid of my brother. <laughs> so, so I thought that was pretty darn funny. My seven-year-old can come up with some pretty good lines occasionally. I, I try to write them all down um, and keep a record of them because this kid is unstoppable. Okay, now it's amazing how fast, even on over one day, that I can get behind on so many things that are happening, even on a holiday. From th this is from um, at Bob in Deep sent me this. Apparently, they they talked about um, Ripple and XRP. What Ripple's doing. Uh, with the banking system, they talked about it on the BBC. This is a pretty big deal. I mean, you don't see this every day, but they're starting to talk about Ripple and digital assets, and they're starting to talk in terms of how central banks are now seriously looking at this. And so, as I've said many times before, you have no idea how far we have come. Because when I was when I first started buying digital assets in 2013. Back then, you didn't know if you were going to get a knock at the door. And I mean, part of your risk that was in your mind, and I guess it was just in our minds, but part of the risk was that, are they going to say this is illegal and that it's illegal to own it? We didn't know anything about what was coming. And that's what it felt like then. And now we're seeing it on TV. You're seeing it all around you. You're starting to see central banks talk seriously about issuing their, their own digital assets. Much different place than where we were. Um, then from NBK Crypto at NBK L Y R A D, he doesn't um, have a title yet, and I cover him a good bit. There's your you come up with a title NBK. Um, Ian Northing, would you believe it? XRP is number one, and let me tell you, and let me tell Wise Crypto has bashed it before. Where's BTC? Um, wise Crypto. This is Wise. No, there's two different things. You've got Wise Crypto, and you also have Wise. Um, this is Wise Crypto. Those are two different things. But they've ranked XRP number one with 94.5%. Then they've got VeChain at number two. They don't even have Bitcoin on the list. Now, this right here, of all the different things that I've seen covering digital assets, where they're ranking digital assets, this list is one that makes sense. And when you look at this list, and what I'm thinking about is the actual use case when i look at this like i've heard a lot of good things um over the last year about v chain it's one of the few digital assets that seems known to have an actual use case um and i think that v chain's been over uh i think that was out of china maybe but um i have been told by people that v chain is coming our way in the united states and that you're going to begin to hear more about it um and then all these others. I've talked about Cardano before. By the way, on Cardano, Charles Hoskinson tweeted last night, any of you that hold Cardano today, apparently, I don't know if it's an airdrop or what they're doing, but he said you have to move your Cardano into a Daedalus wallet or to a Yuri wallet. And he said that it, you, it, it will not count if your Cardano is on a Ledger Nano S. He didn't say that. Some people in the comments section said that. 
And so that's something to think. I have no idea what kind of drop they're doing. I don't understand. I didn't, I haven't, it's the first I had heard of it, but it's something that you need to go look at. Go look at Charles um, Hoskinson's Twitter feed and you'll see the tweet from last night. Um, I am Legion had, had tweeted this out. This was going around yesterday. New um, EU law. Banks allowed to hold and sell crypto as of 2020. Now, this remember Brad Garlinghouse said, um, I believe it was last year, that banks would hold digital assets. Um, I believe he said by the end of this year, whether he's right about the year, to me is irrelevant. The fact that he's right and the banks will hold digital assets, that's everything right there, folks. Um, and then this uh, also was a reply to I am Legion on here. The Volcker rule ch uh, change to Dodd-Frank allows banks to invest in hedge funds. Hedge funds own the crypto, own crypto. U.S. law has changed 1-1-2020. One, one, um, so this Volcker rule change we've talked about before, but now uh, they're going to allow, they're going to be allowed to invest in hedge funds. I think a big part of the reason for the, the, this rule change has to do with digital assets. I've always felt like that. Then Michelle Vandenberg um, sent me a, two or three things. At, uh, and another one, this is from Savvy XRP, $108 billion. This is insanity. Apparently, they're, the federal government's pumping more money into the system. The New York Fed, uh, despite St. Louis branch warnings, the New York Fed pumps $108 billion into U.S. on Wednesday, November 27th, and the U.S. Federal Reserve pumped $108 billion into the American economy using overnight repo tactics and 15-day repos. So everything that you are seeing, if you're seeing the stock market going up, it's not because of a healthy economy. They're, they're trying to keep this facade going as long as they can. The only thing that shocks me is how long they've been able to pull the wool over the world's eyes with all this, because it, none of it is based on any kind of fundamental sound economy. It's all based on money printing and debt and all this nightmare of things that these, these governments and central banks have done. Tony Valentino weighs in. He says all banks will provide crypto services eventually. Public exchanges are useless. Banks can provide the liquidity required to facilitate high p value payments, which pub which public exchanges cannot do in a million years. So that's a that's a great question for you to ask yourself. Um, and he's he's tweeting this out about German, I guess German banks. But anyway, ask yourself this. We've, so we, uh, as of yesterday, we had right at. 200 or so billion in this entire market. Well, think about all the money that's in all these banks across the world and think about what happens when the liquidity that they have sitting there is opened up to digital assets. And think about what that looks like when you hold XRP, the greatest digital asset ever created, that is actually working with many of these banks that are going to be allowed to trade in that digital asset. Think about that for a moment and then come back to this video. Um, and then this was another tweet about uh, Germany proposes a uh, bill to deal in cryptocurrencies, but this was the reply I wanted you to see. Hi all, banks will become more like exchanges and exchanges will become like banks. Enjoy the ride. Now, I want to make a point here. I've told you for a long time, there, when in 2000, whenever, 13, 14, um, when the cryptocurrencies collapsed and, and when I when I got into XRP, I went down the list of all those digital assets on cryptocurrencies. And from my study and what I was looking at and what I've seen since then is that Ripple was the only digital asset that had a team that was working on going to regulators and making sure that they worked from, with regulators from the very beginning. Meanwhile, for the last six, seven years, We've heard all these Bitcoin guys about how they're going to, th this is going to be a revolution and down with the banks and all this stuff and uh, short bankers, um, long Bitcoin and all that talk. And I've always told you that Ripple were the adults in the room and that that was pure silliness. Well, what he's saying right here, yes, now that you're seeing these banks change over, well, who was right, folks? Who was right? Digital assets are not getting rid of the powers that be. Anybody that wants to, and, and I've said it many times, if I was 18 when I got into this, maybe I would have been a Bitcoin guy. 
But since I was in my late thirties, when I got into this originally, I had been around long enough to realize, yeah, uh, revolution. What I'm interested in is a revolution in my wallet. You can get yourself quite a bit of freedom by getting wealthy. And and Bitcoin is not going to be a revolution. There's not going to be. Um, it's like Brad Garlinghouse said. The tanks will be brought out by these central banks and, and governments before that happens. Well, I'm not interested. I'm 45 now. I'm not interested in a revolution except for in my wallet because that can provide freedom for myself and my family for a long time to come if you got enough jack right okay um now here we go moving along from xrp bullish vegas this is the my buddy um funky bad chad who uh lives out in vegas he was at my first ever live stream um he's the guy that looks like ethan beard <laughs> um germany this is the same uh thing this is that article germany Germany proposes bill to allow banks to deal in cryptocurrency in 2020. Here's what this will mean. Um, it says their parliaments drafted a bill, da, da, da. Bottom line is, if you're seeing these kind of articles, it's happening, folks. It is happening. Jonathan D. at XRP underscore YD7 sent me this um, from Coindesk. Now, you, you need to listen up good right here, folks, because what I'm about to tell you will creep you out. Coinbase has patented a system that would allow would automatically identify accounts violating AML rules. Let me warn you all: do not think for a minute that you're gonna you're gonna go on some exchange, you're gonna get your XRP or whatever you own, and then all of a sudden you're just gonna open up an account with a Coinbase or a whoever and send it on there to sell it and cash out. If you try to do something like that, you are cooked. They're gonna shut your account down. And, and they'll think you're some kind of criminal. You bet you better make sure that whoever you're creating your exit strategy with, that you have a long track record with that exchange and that company. So you don't all of a sudden show up looking like you've got all this money and, and you just want to cash out into the system because they will shut you down. They say it in here. They've created this patent. And let me read this part to you. It says good accounts pass through untouched. Bad ones are suspended and referred to law enforcement authorities if the transaction involves more than $2,000, the patent indicates. So you can see where this is all going. If your money is not legitimate, uh, unless you have some kind of crazy way that you think you're going to cash out, these guys are putting in place, and I've said it for a long time, the, 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 the two things, really the main thing, the number one, the one thing that the government or at least the United States and other governments are going to want is is very simply is to be able to tax all of these gains. And so if you're not showing them that you're above board and all of this, um, and you know, while I'm talking to you guys, um, I wanted to mention this. <laughs> this has nothing to do with digital assets, but I was watching the Mississippi State um, Mississippi State uh versus it's their rivalry game mississippi state versus old miss game well one of the old miss players goes into the end zone uh last night scores a touchdown and pretends like he's peeing on the field he's making fun of the mississippi state team and it literally the guy gets a penalty and he literally is the reason they lost the game if you really want to look at it and so Ole Miss ended up losing the game. It's a very good lesson in attitude and attitude problems and doing stupid stuff. I bet his coach reamed him out. Okay. But anyway, on that Coinbase thing, you need to all make sure that you're paying attention to, um, that you're paying attention and you're not just thinking you're going to just all of a sudden put some huge lump sum of money on, it, on an exchange and then sell it. You better have exit strategies that involve these people seeing a track record of you having a lot of money on their exchange and them and them they're getting it because if, it, if all of a sudden all this money shows up out of nowhere from a ledger nano s and you have it you can't show them where all this came from this is what could happen to you okay the joke uh, at kia crypto you know I've, I've been covering him for a long time um and he He's one of the few chart guys or traders that I pay any attention to. And he, this is not necessarily a good thing he's sending out. It's good if you look at this the way I look at it, where as buying opportunities. 
Um, XRP retested the support of dark blue zone um, 20 cents. It faced resistance at 32 cent levels, three failed attempts. The purple zone finds support at 14 cents, and below it, we have the red zone with support at 8 cents. These are levels you should be prepared for. So that's not good news from him. But again, I look at that as, well, that's, this is just temporary type stuff. Mr. B, XRP, at XRP, Mr. Um, so, uh, this is a tweet he had sent out. Coin fair value. Everybody wants to find out more from this coin fair value people. These these people that are putting out a what they call a fair value valuation of XRP based on utility. And he's asking them in this tweet that they should get with uh, Brad Combs and do an interview on his channel about uh, how they come up with these numbers. I think that's a good idea. So spread that around. Um, and then this was a tweet that Mr. B sent me too. This is from XRP Neo. And he says, people from Facebook went to work for Ripple. And now people say that Ripple Net Home is Facebook for banks. I see a connection here. And then David Schwartz says, we're not allowed to call it Tinder for banks. <laughs> so he's being funny. Now, something you ought to do if you've never done it. Um, I do this every once in a while. Uh, I do it with uh, David Schwartz, Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson. Here's something interesting to do sometime if you're bored. Um, go and look look at the things that they have liked. Uh, like in David, this is David Schwartz. Here's an interesting thing that he liked. How, Maddie Greenspan says, how exactly does one acquire a decentralized exchange? This actually pretty much makes pretty good sense. Justin Sun says, uh, the largest decentralized exchange based on Tron Network uh, was, required, was acquired by Polonix. And he's saying, how, how exactly do you acquire a decentralized exchange? That's pretty funny. So every once in a while, you'll if you go into what these guys like, it's pretty pretty interesting. Um, if you look at Brad Garlinghouse's feed, the last thing he liked was the interview he did with this Jay Kim guy at Swell. Well, if you look at Brad Garlinghouse's Twitter feed, it looks like Brad Garlinghouse took a vacation after Swell. If you look at the dates on everything that he sent, I'm, I have a feeling he did. Chris Larson's kind of interesting too. If you can look at his life, the last thing he liked was Ryan Zagone saying HSBC um, taps Ripple founder, Chairman Chris Larson to advise the bank on FinTech developments. This is from January of 2017. That's the last thing that Chris Larson liked. Let's see what his last tweet was. Last tweet, that's his pen tweet, was November 21st when he was, um, I think he was addressing some FUD. So for him to come out after not doing anything since then tells you something. Okay, uh, today's Black Friday. There's 30% off still, the Ledger Nano S. They've got 30% off everything on their website. You can find this link in the description of all of my videos to go and get 30% off so that you store your digital assets safely offline. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that the digital asset investor's turkey was excellent. Thank you for listening.